Hi everyone, I'm Susan Walker. I am your instructor for FSOS 3105 Families and Technology. Um, welcome to my home. <laughs> um, I wanted to provide a brief introduction to the course to you. This will also give you a little bit of an idea of my uh, webcam uh, PowerPoints um, that you can look at uh, you know, before the module to kind of refresh on the content that we're uh, covering the, uh, for that week. So this is Families and Technology. Um, I actually created this course. Um, my research and my teaching is about uh, parents and families um, and education and their use of technology. And I, when we were reviewing the undergraduate curriculum in family social science, um, I was that person in the back of the room, you know, with my hand up saying, we needed a course on technology, you know, to help prepare professionals for the 21st century. And as you've probably experienced, when you're the one to uh, make a suggestion, you end up being the one to um, follow through. So I did, and I created this class a couple years ago. It's great. Um, we have a great time in the class, and I really hope that you enjoy being in the course. Uh, so again, this is Families and Technology, FSOS uh, 3105. So our objectives with the class are really pretty broad. Um, you know, this is what's called a survey course in that we cover a lot of content in a relatively short period of time. And so while we will get in fairly deep in some topics, really we're pretty broad. And uh, my interest with the class is for us to think about our use of technology now as a society and as individuals and what that means to us and what that might mean in terms of shaping our future um, and consider technology both its benefits but also its potential drawbacks and and then of course to plant it squarely in the home and how we are using technology within our families how we're using it in our individual relationships um, from forming relationships and using for dating apps and um, and with our friends and for communication and connectivity um, but then also between parents and children we'll be looking at uh, children's development and um, school age kids adolescents young adults like yourselves and how the use of technology affects our development because certainly as parents our interest with our children is how any tools that children use, anything they're exposed to affects and hopefully will support their development. Um, and our interest is as well how we use technology in ways that support us and promote our well-being as families. So the bulk of the course is really uh, looking at that. And then in the end of the course or the back uh, third of the course, we do professional applications and um, and think about your roles as future professionals, either who work directly with families or have some connection with families and what that might mean for um, understanding technology, both as a content area, but also as an area that affects your skills and um, the ethics um, involved with sharing information and privacy, you know, and things like that. Um, and so, as you can see, this is sort of a, a breakdown of the um, um, of the the class again, from our personal view to looking at family theories, to um, the bulk of the course is on you know technology use within the family, and then for professional applications. Um, I I chose to have the course in this way because um, I look at our use of really anything as individuals in a very systemic way. And, and so while a lot of our research is in this area on, um, you know, the effectiveness of using Canvas as a, a to hybridize a face-to-face -face class, as an example, you know, what does that mean to your learning? How effective is my teaching if we use Canvas, for instance? Um, it also then affects our interest then in these tools, again, both as a content area, our use of technology as a society, but also then in the skill development of employing technology in our practice, which then affects if we're thinking about me as an instructor or we're thinking about a family therapist or a physician, 
um, you know, what is their skill and their comfort in using technology. And not to leave professionals alone, then we think even bigger picture, which is who is it at the workplace or in professional associations or in the government that um, you know, will support us in terms of what our professional, what our professional standards are, you know, what we, what we need to know. So I view technology, um, you know, in a very, very systemic way. Um, and <coughs> a big focus of this class, too, is I want you as learners to be very, very critical um, about technology in your lives both as your lives um, individually as human beings, but also in your lives in, um, in your relationships and then in your lives as professionals. Um, and part of the reason that I want you to be critical is because this is a very, very new source of science. You know, um, really a lot of what we know about social media is no older than you are you know, and in the grand scheme of how long the world's been around, that's not a very long period of time. And so every day there's new information coming out about, you know, the smartphones or about apps or about, um, you know, the internet and privacy and leaks and what this means to kids learning and, you know, things like that. And so because you'll be constantly barraged really on a daily basis with new information about technology's effects, I really want you to be uh, very critical about that and not just accept everything that comes through it'll drive you crazy. And, um, but for us, uh, for you to gain some, you know, critical thinking skills. So for instance, this was an article that came out a couple of years ago, you know, has smartphones destroyed a generation and you'll see headlines like this. And I want you to be critical to look at that piece of research and really um, ask how valid it is. Um, and what can we take away from that that really might be beneficial. Um, I, the other reason we want to be very critical about all of this is, you know, this is going to affect us not just now, but also in the future. And we don't know what kind of effects um, our, you know, our, our own use of technology is having. Undoubtedly, it's not going to go away. Undoubtedly, it is only going to change. It is going to continue to change rapidly, and it is going to continue to affect our lives as a society. And very likely, it is going to affect both the availability and the type of job, you know, that you'll have. And so, again, I think it's important that we're critical consumers of the technologies that we use and that other people are controlling. Um, so, um, so again, you know, our interest in technology, my interest for you really is um, uh, shaped about your future. So, um, and as a learner, I'm very interested in, in sort of conducting this class in a way that stimulates a variety of ways that you can learn, not just that you would uh, remember information and spit it back on a test, but also that you're able to apply and analyze and evaluate um, information that is coming through so that you can take a stand. Uh, we'll do several debates in the class. Um, there'll be a number of times where I'll, where I'll ask you to form an opinion um, about a piece of technology or our use of it. Um, a little bit about me. Um, uh, these are pictures that <laughs> represent me and my family. Um, that's my husband and daughter in the upper, well, my right, probably your left corner. Um, my daughter, Alice, she's 26. She lives in Chicago. Um, that's my husband, Patrick. Um, and then over on the other side are my two pets. Um, Oscar is the cat and he is um, 17 years old. And um, Audrey, my lovely pug, um, is, um, she's 13. Um, in the center picture, that's me with some of my friends. Um, every year I throw an Oscar party. I'm a big movie buff, um, popular culture TV. And um, and then the next picture, the next one next to that is a bull. And I, um, I love to travel. Uh, the bull represents Spain. I was just in Spain this past summer. Um, so I love traveling and I hope you'll share your travels with me as well. And then all of those um, <laughs> predominantly white women at the bottom are um, the, a choir that I sing with, uh, the Twin Cities Women's Choir. So uh, it's a little bit 
um, about me. Um, I have a PhD in child and family studies. Um, before that, my degrees are in nutrition, and uh, I have a bachelor's and a master's in nutrition. Um, so I spent about 10 years uh, working in the field with families as a nutritionist, nutrition educator, and then went back to school. I became far more interested in people's lives than, <laughs> than what they were eating, and, um, and, um, and then specialized in parents and families. And I've been doing that for about the last 30 years. Um, so my work really is my research, my work, my focus is with parents, with families, um, specifically with parenting educators and in the design and the delivery of programs for families. Um, so you can get a little bit of an idea on one side, you know, is my um, teaching experience, my research experience, and I, um, and where technology fits in in both ways. My, from my teaching experience, I've been teaching in the classroom now for many, many years, and I would call myself an early adopter um, I, in, for, in terms of technology. Um, and I um, am always interested in new tools, new techniques, if they make my life more efficient, and especially if they make your learning more effective. So I have used a lot of technology in the classroom. I have also um, uh, done conversion of courses to online platforms. Um, I have taught online um, for m more than 10 years now, um, and I oversaw a fully online uh, parent education uh, program uh, here at the university, the Parent Education Teachers License Program. Um, and then my research and practice for the last 12 years has, again, looked at how families are using technology, um, what it means for their learning, what it means especially for parent social connectedness. I'm very interested in social support and um, what parent social worlds mean to their learning. Um, I have also been involved in research, do research on uh, parenting educator professionals and their own use of technology and what their needs are as professionals. And then I've designed a piece of technology that we are using with the Early Childhood Family Education Program. And, um, and so a big bulk of my research is on the design, the development, the testing, the implementation, and the effectiveness of technology um, in parenting education. So I kind of do, you know, I use technology for teaching. It's also um, a source of my research, which then, you know, where those two things intersect um, come this course and you as future professionals. So, um, you know, in the class, I, um, I, I, re it's a larger class, so we do a lot of things with groups. And so um, I want to get to know you as an individual, and I will ask you to work in groups a lot. And, um, and so I hope that you'll get to know the other people um, in your group, as well as get to know others in the class. I'm very, very big on our learning together as a community. Um, and so I hope you can attend class and participate in class, you know, to your fullest so that uh, we just have a thriving community. Um, the course is a full semester, three week course. We do have a Canvas site that we use for the course. Um, it's not an online course, but I do use Canvas um, very heavily for uh, your access to readings, additional materials, the syllabus, um, you know, where grades will be, our email communication, that sort of thing. There's no textbook for the course. This is such a, a current topics course. Um, that it'd be really, really hard to have a textbook because it would be out of date. So um, we do, we all of the reading in the class are um, up to date, uh, PDFs, uh, reports, uh, news articles, things like that. And then out of class time, um, you know, I, I hope that you'll take time to review content and come to class ready for discussion. I don't want to use class time to to um, uh, offer content to sit up there and, and lecture. How boring. Um, but for us to have an opportunity uh, to discuss. Um, in the class, there are three exams. Uh, they're every sort of every four or five weeks. They're not cumulative. Um, the way I do tests is a combination of multiple choice and true false with short answer. And um, 
There's also uh, reading quizzes about one a week, and um, they're only they're worth about five points. You'll have a couple tries, but it's a motivator for you to um, stay involved with reading. Um, you will also be writing a blog, and I will ask you to post um, on that blog five times, and there will be prompts that are offered, and you can respond to a choice of the prompts, and there's specific information on what the format of those blog posts would look like. The one paper in the class is um, I will ask you to keep track of your own technology use for a 12-hour period and then to do an analysis of that use so that you are um, uh, really applying what you've observed about your own use to a lot of the course concepts that we're covering. Um, and then finally, class participation. Um, I don't take attendance, but I do look, I do record uh, people's participation in activities. And, and if you are, the, are present for 10 of those activities, you get the full credit. So that way we do way more than 10. And then if you miss something, you'll still, you know, but you're coming to class, you know, you'd have to worry about missing that one particular day. Um, this is a pie chart just with a breakdown of how the grade is done. Um, uh, again, blogging, the reading quizzes, the technology analysis, course activities. So, you know, you can, if you're not big on taking tests, you'll know that it counts for less than half of your grade. Okay. Um, so who does well in this class? Uh, people who come to class. <laughs> Coming to class is a huge deal uh, for me. Um, you'll pick up not only content, but really the feel, the, the flavor, the, the essence, the important topics in this class. Um, it's, um, and it also is a way for you to stay engaged with, the, with what we're doing. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's because this isn't a full class uh, with one big project at the end, it's, we do a lot of stuff on an ongoing basis, so there's something going on with this class pretty much every week. And so um, the folks who do the best, usually the ones who um, have a life that will allow them to kind of stay up, you know, with things. Um, and that's about it. I, like I said, I love, love, love teaching this class. I love working um, with uh, the learners who are in the class. I really, really hope throughout the semester that I get a chance to get to know you as an individual um, and that you enjoy both the content of the class as well as what you can learn from the class and your class experience. So um, I look forward to seeing you uh, in class the first day and um, before then or after then, if you have any questions, just um, shoot me an email. Um, I'm at skwalker at umn.edu, and you can also use the communication tool through Canvas. Uh, so that's it, and I will see you in class.